after and tap. Amen, amen. Huh? The WhatsApp. Send inside the WhatsApp group. The WhatsApp link. Link, link, link. Send the link. I haven't sent to the link yet. Send, no. Pastor Tan asked to send. Okay, amen. Anyway, let's begin our service. Amen. Welcome to the house of God, brothers and sisters. Let us worship God. Let us praise God with this very first song. Let the redeem of the Lord. Amen. I have to send. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Amen. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. Our Lord God now has made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Our Lord God now has made the heavens and the earth by thy outstretched arms. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Great and mighty God, great mighty and counsel indeed. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Up from the top, let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, praise the Lord. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, praise the Lord. Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy outstretched arm. Oh, nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Great and mighty God, great in counsel and mighty in thee. Oh, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Let's sing the next song. Let's lift Jesus higher. Lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher, live him out for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I would draw man, I would draw man, I would draw man unto you. Lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher, live him out for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up of the earth, I would draw man, I would draw man, I would draw man unto you. Amen. Let's lift him up this evening. Yes, O oh God, we thank you, O oh God. Lord, O oh God, we worship you, O oh God. Lord, we praise you, O oh God. Yes, O oh God. Let's come with a heart of worship. Amen. And let's worship him with this next song. Oh, mercy, mercy, Lord. Mercy, mercy, Lord, your mercy is how we are restored. Oh, mercy, mercy, Lord, help us to show your mercy, Lord. You have been patient with all our offenses. You have forgiven all of our sins. We are deserving only your judgment. But 
your great mercy triumph again no oh, mercy mercy Lord your mercy how we are restored oh mercy mercy Lord help us to show your mercy, Lord, Lord, you have taught us to love one another as you have loved us, so we must love, always forbearing, always forgiving, showing to others. Mercy with no, no mercy, mercy, Lord, your mercy's how we are restored, oh, mercy, mercy, Lord, help us to show your mercy, Lord. Mercy, mercy, Lord, your mercy is how we are restored. Oh, mercy, mercy, Lord, help us to show your mercy, Lord, help us to show. Your mercy, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy tonight. Thank you, Lord. Through your mercy, we are restored, Lord. Thank you for your patience, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Your mercy triumph. Time and time and time again, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we thank you for listening to our prayer. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for all that you have done for us tonight. Tonight in your name we come. Hallelujah. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. And tonight we want to bring this COVID issue before you. Lord, as the people of God cry out unto you, Tonight we cry out to you, Lord, in desperation, Lord. Truly, we humble ourselves. We seek your face, Lord. If there we have sinned against you, Lord, forgive us our sins, O God. If our forefathers have sinned against you, O Lord, forgive us our sin. This world have walked in pride, walked in disobedience, have not acknowledged you as their God, O oh Lord. Forgive them for their transgression against you, Lord. Lord, have mercy upon this earth, O oh Lord God, Almighty Lord. There are many to be saved, O oh Lord, many to be added unto the kingdom of God. Lord, we pray, God, that your mercy triumph over this pandemic, O oh God, issue. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, visit us through your word, hallelujah. Through the Holy Spirit tonight, God Almighty, hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Musicians, praise God. Thank you very much. And uh, so, worship service is on Wednesday. Um, on Wednesday, we are, I will do it from home, okay? So, you don't have to come on Wednesday. So, we just come on Sunday morning, Sunday night. So Wednesday night will be, I'll do it from home. If not, then I will come with Jordan to the church to do it in, from church. I'll see how it goes. But, uh, okay, so time being, uh, that's, that's, that's uh, what we plan. All right, yeah? Okay, all right, praise God. So, amen. So we're going to go before God with our giving. And Father, bless every giver tonight and those who give uh, through live stream. God Almighty, as they set aside their tithes and offering. And um, 
and uh, TT it into the bank account or church account. I bless them too, God Almighty. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we want to remember Brother Aru and pray for speedy recovery. No damage to his brain, no damage to his neck, we ask from you. And we pray for Sister Jasmine, God Almighty, uh, your great mercy and healing be upon her as well. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, tonight, O oh God, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, um, we're going to turn to the book of uh, Hebrews 11 and verse 32. So, Hebrews 11 was uh, 32. And what more shall I say, for the time would fall or fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, Samson, Gideon, sorry, and Jephthah, also of David, and Samuel, and the prophets. Okay. Tonight, I want to continue to examine you with you uh, on the subject of faith, that is, uh, the faith of David. And uh, we're going to look at the kind of faith that he has that uh, warrant him or permit him to be allowed to be named among those who are found in this chapter of faith. Uh, David is a man we know that who runs after the heart of God. Uh, in Acts chapter 13, the scriptures has this to say about him before he went to sleep or before he Christians actually if they die, they go, they are considered sleeping until a time of day whereby God will wake them up. That is, their body is at rest. Okay? Their spirit, soul is with the Lord, but their earthly body is asleep. It's not decay. It could be burned. Okay? It could be thrown into the sea. But uh, according to God, the body is still there. How it works... Um, only God can do that, but uh, the Christian falls asleep. For David, he says, after he has served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his father and saw corruption. So David served his own generation by the will of God. And all of us are to serve our own generation by the will of God. David is known for many things. Uh, from a warrior to a songwriter to a singer uh, to Israel's greatest king, a brave man, a man of uh, kindness. But uh, what he was known mainly for was he was a man of faith, his life of faith. So we're going to take a, a journey to see the faith that he has. Now, before we go into that, we will have to see that the faith life is the life that all righteous people of God are called to live by. Okay, we are all called to live by, by faith. All right. So faith is firm persuasion based on God's word. And we act upon the word of God by faith. We may not see the results. We may not even see the result in our generation and time, but by faith, we believe what God says and we put that belief into action. Four times in the Bible, one time in the Old Testament, three times in the New Testament, we always say in the Bible, the just shall live by faith. Hebrew or Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Romans 1.17 the just, the righteous shall live by faith. Galatians 3.11 The just, the righteous shall live by faith. Hebrews 10.38 The just, the righteous shall live by faith. Okay, so without faith, Hebrews 6.11.6 6 says it is impossible, it's not possible to please God. To please God, one must walk, act, 
by faith. Now it is because of living by faith that David was able to like Gideon, like Barak, like Samson, okay, do what he did or do what they did. Last week uh, from home, uh, we, I preached about Gideon and Gideon uh, with just a trumpet and uh, with just a jar and a light uh, was able to uh, uh, overcome the Midianites. 300 uh, soldiers split into three groups. Their weapons were just a trumpet, a jar, and light. Okay? And with that, they went against the Midianites, who, which the Bible says in the book of Gideon, uh, sorry, Judges, uh, the numbers of it were like grasshoppers. Okay, you cannot count uh, grasshoppers. There's so many. Okay, so, so were the Midianites. There's so many. But Gideon, uh, by faith, with 300 men, with these instruments, which were not instruments of war or weapons at all, but they went by faith and, uh, and overcome the Midianites. It's all because of faith that 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 was possible when there is faith there will be a move of god amen in response to that faith the woman with an issue of blood came to jesus from behind and said if i could only touch him i shall be healed true enough the centurion officer sent the elders to jesus and jesus says he wants to go he wants to uh, go to the house of the centurion officer to pray for the sick man Centurion officers say, No need, Jesus, speak your word, and my servant shall be healed. Blind Bartimaeus, um, Abraham, not knowing where he's going, when at the age of 75 with his wife and his uh, nephew uh, Noah, okay, built the ark of God by faith, 120 years of building an ark. Uh, verse 33, verse 30, to verse 35 of Hebrew 11 says, Who through faith subdued kingdoms, Hebrew 11, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the age of the sword. All this is by faith. Out of weakness were mixed strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, verse 35. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. These all we find here, they were able to bring down kingdoms. They were able to obtain God's promises, stop the mouth of the lion. All this, it was accomplished through this word called faith, by faith. So while David was remembered for many things, uh, one thing that he was so remembered for was he was remembered for his faith. By faith, he fought Goliath, not intimidated by the size of and look of Goliath. By faith, he went with five stones and a sling. Uh, and uh, when Goliath came with him with armors, armor barrel, javelin and spear, by faith, when Saul pursued him uh, for like eight years, and when there was an opportunity to end his uh, eight years of running, he did not, you know, do it, but surrender it to God and trust God that God will in his time put everything right, okay? And he doesn't have to uh, do that, do what uh, his uh, fellow soldier says to him, know what, you can end your misery tonight, today, this morning, you know, just kill him. But he did not, by faith, he trusts the mercy of God that God will not, uh, what you call that, uh, 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 shame him but will protect him and take care of him. So what kind of faith does David have? The first is he has a bold faith, a courageous faith. It is an unafraid kind of faith. Now I many times say that uh, courage is rising above fear. It's not saying that there's no heartbeat of fear. But uh, there is fear but Courage is rising above fear and faith is rising above your fear 
and, and he has this kind of bold faith that rose again in his fear. And we see it when he confronted Goliath. He took a sling, took a staff, chose five stones. It was what he had when shepherding sheep to uh, protect them. But this faith was not based on his own strength, but rather based on the promise that the fight that he is in is not his fight, it is the battle or it is the fight that belongs to the Lord. Every fight that you get into okay, is not your battle. As a Christian, the battle is the battle of the Lord. Verse Samuel 17, verse 47. And he says to Goliath and those gathered, and though all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord, and he will give all of you into our hands. David's faith is a faith of not his own, but a faith that is based on understanding that every battle and fight is a battle of God. Okay? And every battle of the enemy against him is against God. Goliath is not fighting him. Goliath is fighting God. And we know who is stronger. Okay? He was more able. For Samuel 14, verse 6 Jonathan words to David, Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. In the book of 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15, okay, so speaking to Jehoshaphat, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. 2 Chronicles 32, 8, Hezekiah, with him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us to fight our battles. In the book of Proverbs, uh, Psalms 44, verse 6 to 8, I do not trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory, but you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God, we make our bows all day long, and we will praise your name forever. Proverbs 21.30, okay, it says that there's no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. Hosea 1.7, Yet I will show love to the house of Judah. I will save them, not by bow, sword, or battle, or by horses and horsemen, but the Lord, but by the Lord their God. Romans 8, 31, 37. If God is for us, who can be against us? No, in all things we are more than conqueror through Him. More than conqueror is because the one that is behind us, the one that is for us, He is, okay, is involved in every battle that you and I face. And just as here we find here that uh, David, when confronting Goliath, okay, he went in the bold faith, basing that faith on the God who is on his side, who is involved, who is with him in the battle. The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. So this is the faith he walked by. Okay. This is the faith that he has. Okay, and this is the faith that we need to have with us whenever we are face to face or face with the enemy that tries to tempt us, that tries to weaken us, that tries to divide, that tries to bring problems to our life, to know that what you're going through is not just you alone in it, but your God is involved. Amen. And you can boldly put your trust and confidence in the God who is for you, I read to you again his words, for the battle is the Lord, he says to them as he goes forth to, um, against Goliath. Secondly, it was an unwavering faith. 
unwavering in the sense of in the faithfulness of God and unwavering in God's timing and justice, especially when at a time when King Saul uh, was going after him. Waver means to falter or to fall or change his mind over what he believes to be right. He, his faith in God in that circumstances when he was pursued by King Saul. Okay, he never wavered okay, in his faith in God, even the time, eight years. You know, eight years, you got an eight years problem. It is a long time. You know, eight years of running, eight years of hiding, eight years of, you know what, you could do something, but you don't want to do. Eight years, you know what, of uh, one time we know that he stay in the cave and one time we know he prepared, pretended like a madman. So eight years problem, okay? But yet he never falter. He understand that King Saul, as we uh, read about his life, that uh, David understand that King Saul is God's anointed king. And no matter what, uh, he is not going to touch him or is not going to hurt him. He's not going to take... Uh, vengeance against him. He's going to let God take care of King Saul. Second Samuel chapter 1, okay, verse 1 to 24. Now it happened after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, that he stayed two days in Ziklag. On the third day, a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. When he came to David, he bowed to the ground and lay himself face down. Then David asked him, where do you come from? He said, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. David said to him, how did it go? Please tell me. He answered, the people have fled from the battle. Also, many of the people have fallen and are dead. Saul and Jonathan, his son, are also dead. Verse 5, so David said to the young man who informed him, how do you know Saul and his son Jonathan had died? And the young man told him, explained, By chance, I happened to be on Mount Gibor, and there was Saul leaning on his spear, and the chariots and horsemen were close behind him. When he turned to look behind him, he saw me and called to me, and I answered, Here I am, he asked me, Who are you? I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He said to me, Stand up facing me and kill me, for agony has come over me, yet I still live. So I stood facing him and killed him. Okay, so this man killed King Saul because I knew that he could not live after he had fallen. Then I took the crown which was on his head and the band which was on his arm and brought them here to my Lord. Then David grabs his own clothes, tore them in mourning. So did all the men who were with him. They mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and Jonathan his son and for the Lord's people and the house of Israel because they had fallen by the sword in battle. David says to the young man, verse 13, who informed him, where are you from? He answered, I'm the son of a foreigner and a Malachite. David said to him, how is it that you were not afraid to put out your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? David called one of the young men and said, Go execute him. So he struck the Amalekite. He died. David said to the fallen man, Your blood is on your own head, for your own mouth has testified against you, saying, I've killed the Lord's anointed. All the while, okay, we find here that David here, he understood that King Saul was the Lord's anointed king. God had anointed him. And he would not touch this king who was anointed by God, no matter how evil and, uh, and, and his intention towards him, running to try to kill his life, running after him, King Saul. So when he heard he had died, and he heard that this man okay, killed him, okay, ended his life, okay, so he says, you know, how come uh, you uh, are not afraid to touch and anoint anointed man. Okay. This story tells us that King Saul 
uh, sorry, David, okay, his faith in God was unwavering. He trusted God to solve his problems there. Okay, he trusted God. Okay, even though um, there were difficulties. First Samuel twenty four. Verse one. Okay, I want to read to you. When Saul returned from following the Philistine, he was told, "Behold, David is in the wilderness of Egedi." Then Saul took three thousand chosen men out of all Israel, went to search for David and his men in front of the rocks of the wild goats. On the way, he came to the sheep sheepfold where there was a cave, and Saul went to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the cave. Okay, so Saul earlier did not know David was inside the cave. His men were inside. He went into the cave to relieve himself. He took off his robe, put it by the side. And David, men saw him. They saw him, saw the king, saw doing that. And David, men said to King uh, David, it was four, Behold, this is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will hand over your enemy to you, and you shall do to him as seems good to you. Then David arose and steadily cut off the hem of Saul's robe. Afterward, David conscience bothered him because he had cut off the hem of Saul's robe. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, to put out my hand against him, since he is the anointed of the Lord. So David strongly rebuked his men with this sword, with these words, and did not let them rise up against Saul. Saul got up, left the cave, and went on his way. Verse 8, Then David also got up afterward and went out of the cave and called after Saul, saying, My Lord, the king. And when Saul uh, looked behind him, David bowed his face to the ground and laid himself down, face down. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of men who say David seeks to harm you? Behold, your eyes have seen today how the Lord has given you into my hand in the cave. Some told me to kill you, but I spare you. I say I will not reach out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Look, my father, indeed, see the hem of your robe in my hand. Since I cut off the hem of your robe and did not kill you. Now, know and understand that there is no evil of treason in my hands. I have not sinned against you, though you are lying in wait to take my life. May the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord avenge me of you. But my hand shall not be against you. Verse 13, as the proverb of ancients say, All of the wicked comes wickedness, but my hand shall not be against you. After whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog, a single flea? May the Lord be the judge and render judgment between me and you. And may he see and plead my cause, vindicate me by saving me from your hand. He could have killed this king. Okay? He was relieving himself, he just, but he did not. He just cut out a simple corner of this king's robe. He could have plunged the sword into this king and end all the pain, all the misery, all the running, but he did not. He trusted God. He saw that this is God's anointed king and he did not touch him. And because he has this unwavering faith in God, that God will right the wrong. And tonight, likewise tonight, whatever you're battling with may look long, may sound long, may seem long, but know and understand if we walk, hallelujah, in the spirit and not walk in the flesh, amen. If we walk according to the word of God, walk in the fruit of the spirit, doing it God's way, at the end of the day, uh, God himself will right every wrong. Amen. So tonight, uh, let's bow our heads and uh, let's thank you for the lessons of faith found in the word of God. Father, tonight, we do thank you for this uh, topic here and the men who walk before us, who walk by faith. Lord's enemies surround us and they are many. God, if we live for you, testify of you, make righteous decisions, stand for you. God, enemies surround us all. We pray, dear Father in heaven, that at these times, God, you will help us all. 
God, in these times, to walk by faith, live by faith. Oh Lord, not taking things in our own hands, but always trusting you. Oh Lord, in uh, your own timing and in your own wisdom to solve whatever uh, battles and problems that we might be facing. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless all of you. Amen.